So this is Temple Edfu. Now, where we stand, okay, or where you can see in front here, if I, if I turn myself slightly, you can actually see the doorway to this magnificent temple. And you can see that there's way more than just this. It goes on and on, and it's got these outer walls. And on the outer walls, there's very powerful hieroglyphs, which actually show the story of Atlantis and plant medicine and everything like that. Not everybody sees those hieroglyphs, if you don't understand, but like we do, because we're star seeds and we know all about Atlantis. So it's all in the back walls. But then this, this as, as an entirety, this temple, okay, is about, it kind of tells the story, all of these hieroglyphs here. It tells the story of the war you can see here that he had with his uncle Set. Set murdered his father, Osiris, and he avenged his father's death. And that is where he lost his left eye, which I spoke about before. Um, uh, how Hathor helped heal his eye because Hathor and Horus were like in love. They were like, yeah, they were they were sacred counterparts. Um, and yeah, this this temple speaks about all of that. How he brought his his um uncle set to justice. And the most empowering thing about this is why the people loved him so much. Imagine if your uncle had murdered your father. How to hold your restraint that you don't kill him on the spot, okay? He didn't. He did what was expected of him to actually bring Set to the council so they could try him for his, his um, wrongdoings. And that's what Horus did. So he was very well respected by the people and, you know, and how he held himself and how he was just very integral and, you know, authentic. And um, yeah, so Horus, like I say, he... Hero, that's why he's known as Horus, Heru, which is the the um, Greek name. And uh, that means um, hero. So, you know, he was a hero. He hero for the people, you know. So um, Horus as an energy, Horus as a guide, the way I, I connect with Horus. He is obviously the divine masculine. He is the... He is the example of harmony and balance because he's the son of Osiris and, and uh, Isis, who are powerful to in flames. In fact, they all were back then. And they obviously had their child and that was Horus. So what this what they call the twin flame triad or triad, however you want to say it. And it's the triangle. OK, so he is a product of such union. Right. So when you come into union, there is harmony, there's balance and all of the above. But he's also known as, as, as powerful codes of leadership. So when you need to step into your leadership self, you know, Horus is a very, very powerful guiding light for that. Also as well, he's very much an activator of the third eye. I mean, I will be sharing this meditation channel activation definitely when we're on the Nile, no doubt, because that's where I usually share it. And um, we work with the left eye and the right eye. Left eye is Horus. Right eye is um, is Ra, okay? The sun god Ra. So that's the left and the right. Luna, meaning moon, right eye being the sun. He always activates me here. So I have this triangle going on. So again, it's that twin flame triad thing. It's basically Osiris, it's um, Isis, and it's, you know, Horus. So he brings the vision for me, that's how he activates. He he helps me see beyond the dimension or the place that I'm in. So he's really, really powerful when it comes to like conscious creation because he can bring he can bring your vision. And of course, he's a hawk that is his spirit spirit bird body, um, because he's able to fly high and and you know see above everything. So he's a very very powerful um, being to work with. But he has this softness and gentleness in his delivery. Now, I liken him, everybody likens him actually to Jesus, because it's true. You have Mother Mary, and then you have um, you have Isis, they're the same. So then you have Jesus and you have Horus, they're also the same because they lived the same earthly life. Okay, They had physical incarnations. A lot of the Egyptian gods, especially the parents of Isis and Osiris, they were kind of like um, what I call like ethereal um, parents. They didn't have physical form, but um, Osiris and Isis and Set and Nephthys and all of those, because they were four brothers and sisters, they had physical form. And so obviously did Horus. Now, Horus and Jesus had the same life. They had big boots to fill and they were destined to take over from their fathers, one being God and the other one being Osiris. So, you know, they had to go through their humanness of purging their pain and everything like that to be able to step into the fullness of, of, of who they are. Anubis was the same. Anubis was the son of um, Nephthys and Nephthys um, uh, left him in the desert. Long story, different story. We'll go over that another time. But... 
Isis took on um, Anubis as her um, a kind of adopted child, if you like. And Anubis had to go through abandonment issues and everything like that. So there was a lot of humanness to these to these gods and goddesses, which is why they're so relatable to us and us to them. So Horus had to go through a lot, as did Jesus, in, in purging and getting right with what he had to do with his mission. And my goodness, did he have a big mission. So he knows you know, what we're going through and we know what he's been through, there's an instant connection because, you know, we can relate. And once you have that relation, then that medicine comes in from Horus. And that's a beautiful thing. That's when you start co-creating. So this is Horus. This is his temple and um, a magnificent temple, as I say. And it is uh, situated on the side of the Nile. It's a short horse ride journey um, in a sh uh, horse and cart from the boat to the to the temple. Uh, but yeah, this is, this is a powerful temple and you're absolutely going to love it.